Alright, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, uh, we continue our lecture on research methodology. So, this part, uh, I'm going to explain about uh, questionnaire design. So, um, when we are doing a questionnaire or survey research, right? So, a questionnaire is, uh, is something, uh, is a measurement tool that uh, necessary to to measure the opinion of people to get the 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 feeling the expression of the people uh, through the questionnaire right so the questionnaire sometimes uh, we can dig the behavioral uh, information or psychological information from a questionnaire right so questionnaire is uh, a pre-formulated write a set of question to which the respondent record his answer right so a guideline for a questionnaire design so there are two guidelines first is we need to understand the principle of wording another one is principle of measurement principle of wording means that we're going to put a word into our question a very simple word and easy to understand uh, and lack of ambiguous question means that we're going to avoid ambiguous question we're going to avoid a double barrel question and principle of measurement means that we need to understand what kind of measurement we want to take for that question either a liquid scale which is a ordinal scale either a in interval scale ratio scale or nominal scale right this uh, principle of measurement is very important for us to do uh, next uh, analysis of the questionnaire we want to get the sum inside of the questionnaire we need to design properly according to the uh, objective and it, and make sure the variable or item that we are measuring or design is suitable for our uh, method of analysis or statistical model right so the principle of wording content and purpose of the question first we need to look at the nature of variable tab subjective feeling or objective fact right if the subjective feeling the subjective feelings are uh, usually uh, measure we, 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 we put some belief perception attitude question should tap the dimension right this question should tap the dimension if you are looking into an uh, objective fact so objective facts for example such as age educational level single direction direct question this is a very direct question and objective facts means that people cannot lies about this this is a measurable and fact uh, uh, question the purpose of question should be considered carefully to ensure the variable are adequately measured so the purpose of question you need to consider all the dimension right so you need to make uh, make sure not uh, none of the item are left out to uh, to measure our objective right so principle of wording language and wording of the questionnaire language at the approximate level of understanding the of the respondent so make sure language the the question that you ask the item that you ask should be understandable and then un under understandable uh, for for each respondent choice of word depend on their educational level uses of term and idiom in the culture and the frame of reference of the respondent so this is the thing that we need to consider carefully Respond will be biased if the respondent does not understand or interpret differently of the question. So this is the the thing that we need to careful, uh, carefully uh, we need to carefully uh, take take care. So the term and form of question, term and form of question TFQ, right? Open ended versus closed ended. So there are there are open ended question and there are closed ended question. So open ended question normally we leave it for for the respondent opinion for respondent to express their feeling attitude belief and so on. A closed ended question means that we already give the choice for uh, for respondent to choose. Right, it's a closed question. 
positive and negative word question. So this is uh, important when we have a set of uh, question that very long item, right? We have a lot of item to ask in one section. So we should put positive and negative uh, question uh, together. So, so we can understand whether the respondent uh, just ticking the questionnaire without reading or it, uh, they read the questionnaire. And we should avoid double barrel question. Double barrel means that we have two question in one question. Ambiguous question. All the ambiguous question should be avoided. That's why when you're designing a questionnaire, you need to read by yourself whether you can understand or not. And then you try to pass to expert to review the content, whether the, the expert can understand or not. Or you can try to pass to somebody else to try to understand the question and ex explain back the question to you whether the explanation is correct to your perception or not correct to your dimension. A recall dependent question, right? So uh, always make a recall dependent question, right? Leading question also should be avoided. So we should not leading. Uh, we should not. We should not. Uh, try to put a leading question. So leading question might, might uh, end it to a biased answer, right? And also we should avoid social uh, desirability question, right? So social desirability question also should be devoided because we want to get a unbiased answer, right? So this is a type and form of question. Right? Let's look at one by one. Right? Open-ended Open-ended means respondent can answer in any way. For example, state of five state five things that are interesting and challenging in job. So you can put anything right to answer the question. So what is your favorite food? So the respondent can put anything here. So we are not providing any choices to the respondent to answer the question. Uh, differently, in close-ended question, respondent make choice among a set of alternatives. So it can help respondent to make a quick decision, right? So can quote information easily. When you have a set of answer, you when the respondent tick the answer, you can do a coding and you can do a code book and do a coding into our statistical software. Overlapping possible alternative not given, respondent might be confused. Maybe you give the overlapping or possible alternative and if you are not giving them, so respondent might be confused. So open-ended versus close-ended. Advisable to include open-ended at the end of the questionnaire to give the respondent opportunity to make additional command. So this is the suggested. Lah. So positive and negative word question. So advisable to include negative word question to ensure the respondent remain alert when while answering means that we want to know we want to detect whether the respondent are just ticking the questionnaire without reading the question so if the respondent just ticking the questionnaire without reading the answer question so when we put all the positive question inside the item so we we will know anyway so if we combine positive question and negative question together we know that this the respondent is not reading the questionnaire so we can exclude the respondent in the, our in our analysis for example the negative question i don't feel i am very effective in my job so this is a negative question so i felt i have been able to accomplish a number of different things in my job so this is a positive question right so double barrel question so double barrel question should be avoided so double barrel means that question that lends itself to a different possible response to its subtypes. Uh, so for example, do you think there is a good market for the product and that is will sell well? So in this question, we have two questions inside this question. So we should avoid this type of question because it might confuse the respondent to answer. Right. So ambiguous question. Respondent is not sure about the question and difficult to decide. So uh, this type of question also should be avoided, right? Because it might lead to a biased uh, answer or 
unclear answer. So for example, to add to what extent would you say about uh, you are happy? So this is going to be um, unclear question. So this is unclear question going to be uh, confusing the respondent to answer the question, right? So another type of uh, question is a recall dependent question. Require respondent to recall experience from the past. The answer might be biased, but it's a good practice to for uh, for a questionnaire. Uh, is an employee who has a thirty years uh, service in organization is asked to state when he first starting working in a particular department and how long he may not be able to give the correct answer because he's already thirty years uh, service. Right, it's a going, it's a long journey, right? It may be, maybe way off of this response, lah. Huh? So leading question should not be a phrase in such way that they lead the respondents to give us the response in the researcher that researcher would give would like them to give. For example, don't you think that these days of escalating cost of living, employees should be given good pay rise? So this is what uh, example of leading question, right? So giving a hint that the the cost of living is increasing, so uh, for uh, automatically, respondent would think that employee should be get uh, should be getting a rise, right? The answer is expected already. Right, so should avoid the leading question. So, to what extent do you agree that employees should be given a higher pay rise? So, this question should be avoided. The first question. So, loaded question. Loaded question is a question asked in an emotionally charged manner. Right, to what extent do you think management is likely to be victims? if the union decide to go on strike to what extent the employee are in favor on strike so this is a is a is a emotional uh, question right so we should uh, avoid an, an emotional question social de desirability we should not be worded such as such that there is elicit socially desirable response so for example do you think that older people should be laid off so this is kind of a rude question and maybe you can rephrase this one to to answer to get a, a nice question and polite question there are disadvantage and advantage of retaining senior citizen in a workplace to what extent do you think companies would continue to keep the elderly on their payroll right so this is an example of a loaded or uh, sorry uh, social desirability question length of question so you need to make it simple and short so you, you need to make you need to know that a respondent have a lot of question to answer right you need to make it short and simple so the respondent will not get easy to uh, easy boring to the question and you not burden the respondent should not exceed 20 uh, more than 20 words or exceed one full line in print so this is based on horse 1968 and opium 1968 and 1986 right so you should uh, carefully and guard your question should not exceed more than 20 20 word so sequencing of question we are using funnel approach from a general question to the specific question right so you should arrange your question your uh, your item carefully you need to ask from a general question to a specific question don't don't uh, make it uh, intercept right classifying data or personal information the best not ask the respondent name so this is the best thing right you should not ask the private information about the respondent such as uh, phone number ic number right or names right so sometimes respondent will not be a secure uh, you feel not secure if you are asking their personal information you can ask 
can be asked at the beginning or the end of the questionnaire but it is very sensitive information right so highly sensitive information such as income age are best placed at the at very end of the uh, questionnaire so another part of uh, designing a good questionnaire is principle of measurement it's actually a guideline for the questionnaire design lah, right general appearance or get up of the questionnaire so important to have a good introduction right so when you want to introduce your respondent to answer the question so you need to do uh, some introduction right you need to write a good introduction while organize instruction and need alignment of the question to ease the process of answering the questionnaire you cannot put all the question compress in one paper so it will make the respondent uh, not very happy and feel loaded and sometimes some question uh, respondent will not answering uh, that question at all so you need to make an, your questionnaire in a very nice alignment a very nice page and with a clear instruction right so a good instruction necessary to have a proper uh, introduction that clearly disclose the identify uh, uh, the identify of the purpose of the survey assurance of confidentiality and of the quotes note right so this is the three thing that you need to uh, make sure you have in a good uh, introduction so you need to state your purpose of the survey assurance of the confidentiality and and of the quotes uh, notes so this is an example of a good introduction for example uh, this questionnaire is designed to study aspect of life at work the information you provide will help us better understand the quality of our work life because you are the one who can give us the correct picture of how you experience your work life i request you to respond the question frankly and honestly right so then you see the second paragraph your response will be keep strictly confidential only member of the research team will have access to the information you give in order to ensure the utmost privacy, we have provided an identification number for each participant. This will be used by us only for follow-up procedure. Right? And you need to end our, your introduction. Thank you very much with, for your time and cooperation. I greatly appreciate your, the help of your organization and yourself in furthering this research endeavor. So this is a very good introduction for a questionnaire. So organizing a questionnaire, a question, giving instruction and guidance uh, and good alignment. So organize question logically and neatly in an appropriate section and providing instruction on how to complete the items. So this is very important thing to take note. Right. So this is one of the example of questionnaire that they are having a good direction, uh, direction or instruction right and they, they, they divide the section into three parts so this is very good uh, questionnaire as example and this is sometimes this is a very complex uh, questionnaire you already look this one this type of questionnaire often in the real life but this is not a very good example so you need to align the questionnaire uh, properly and put it into a nice layout right so this is going to be very complex then uh, people already uh, always see this in a form so we are not going to give a form uh, to respondent uh, like uh, they apply a job like as I they apply a job we want the respondent to feel comfortable and easy to uh, read the question right so you make to make some space to when you writing the question so information on income and other sensitive personal data locate the at the end of the questionnaire right if you need 
If you don't need, then you don't ask at all, right? Explain the usefulness of the information, how it can contribute to your knowledge and problem solving. If your if your objective doesn't need their personal sensitive personal data, you don't need to ask at all, right? So. Information, income, and other sensitive personal data may be, for example, income, right, yearly income, right, so on. So, open-ended question at the end. So, it's the best practice to put open-ended question at the end to allow respondent to comment on any aspect they choose. We should end up with the expression of the sincere thanks, right. So, this is very important to take note when you're designing a questionnaire. And when you already finished all as, uh, asking all the questions, you should conclude the questionnaire with a sincere thanks, right? So you should write up some example, uh, some uh, paragraph, make, make it very short paragraph to, to express your thankfulness and appreciate uh, the time of the respondent to fill in the question. I think that's all for our questionnaire design. So I have an exercise for you, right? Uh, in this exercise, you can pause the video and read the, uh, the statement and write down the, the question, try to answer each question, right? So this is a question situation number one, right? Baitumal College at Kota Baru is planning to introduce a free bus service within a campus for their lecturers administrative staff, student and visitors. So this is one of the several alternative proposed to reduce traffic congestion within the campus. The administrative staff, student and visitor who are interested to use the service, Baitumal College would also like to identify strategic location outside the campus as pickup point and also interested to determine frequency of pickup for each point. So, make sure you write down the statement, situation. This is the answer, uh, uh, the question. Draft four questions to obtain demographic information of the respondent. Draft four questions to achieve the objective of the problem uh, occurred. Draft two open ended questions to obtain the suggested suggestion and comment of the respondent. Right. This is a problem. Uh, uh, is situation number two. Let me make it bigger. So we can see now. Oops. Yep. You can pause the video and uh, write down the situation. This is the question. It's the same question, actually. Right? Uh, this is the question for number two. For this is a situation number three. You can pause the video for a while and uh, jot down the situation, right? And this is uh, question number three. This is uh, actually the same question. And the last uh, situation, question number four, let me make it, make it bigger. Right. You can pause the video and write down the question. Right. So this is the question. It's the same question actually. Just need to uh, draft four question to obtain demographic information. Draft four question to achieve the objective of the problem. Okay. And draft two open in the question to obtain the suggested uh, or comment. Uh, of the respondent and this is your assignment but uh, treat this as your exercise as well right. so design a questionnaire that you would you uh, you could use to assess the quality of your on-campus dining facilities make sure you can test the following hypothesis there is a high positive relationship between service quality of the on-campus dining facility and customer loyalty but actually, this is not uh, not really an assignment, but I uh, treat this as your uh, practice, right? Okay, I think that's all for questionnaire design and 
I think that's what. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum.